Desmond, how are you? I'm well. I'm well. Uh, uh, summer has has come to an end here in uh, in New York City, here in Queens. But I, I got the mosquitoes. I went for a nice uh, walk with a friend of mine that I hadn't seen in a while. We got lunch and we went walking by the waterfront. And uh, it seems like the mosquitoes got their last couple bites all over my calves and uh, my kneecap. So that's not that's not too great. But outside of that, uh, I'm I'm doing doing quite well. Makes sense. That's awesome. Wow. That was such a detailed sort of description. I loved it. Uh, um, you're saying fall is, is it's among us, and I'm sitting here and looking at, I live in Atlanta. I'm actually in a town called Roswell outside of Atlanta, and I'm, I'm looking at the percentage of humidity right now and thinking, wow, we're really a long way from fall starting here, but you got me thinking about a nice fall New York day. So uh, thank you for that. <laughs> No, no worries. I I, I hope the, uh, the the pumpkin spice and Oktoberfest <laughs> makes its way to you soon. Yeah, I appreciate that. Queens, that's awesome. So my I have half my family grew up in Forest Hills. Um, so great, great, great area. With, uh, I'm actually seeing Death Cab there at the end of the month. Oh, cool. Wow, Death Cab. I haven't heard that name in a while, though for no good reason other than just I haven't spoken to anybody about it. That's uh, that's exciting. Um, how 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 many shows have you been to? Kind of. I know New York's had a really crazy sort of spout up and down with with COVID and and a lot of crazy things, it being the epicenter of multiple things when it came to the pandemic. Um, How have shows been, I would say, both locally and uh, sort of for national bands, too, since that kind of came back? It's been been good. Like, our... uh on a local level, like our release show was had, had a pretty pretty good turnout, um, and the I went to a local show this past Friday, uh, Power Trash and Ultra Deluxe, two two great bands people should check out. A decent amount of people uh, rolled through to that. Um, for the for the big bands, I mean, if people people are uh, coming through. It's just one of those things. We'll see how it goes. Uh, you know this this time around because last year the fall into the winter was was where things really spiked and got got brutal. I, I think actually the first uh, the only bout of COVID I got actually was from a, a newfound glory show uh, like uh, self titled newfound glory which was uh, maybe not super sold out or I, it, maybe it ended up being sold out but there was a lot of people there. So I guess ultimately shows are back, although we'll see. Hopefully we don't have any more crazy spikes. Um, and I, it definitely, I think occasionally when you have spikes, you might have like shows get, get a little bit harder to fill out, understandably, because it's New York. So we're having to be on subways on top of each other, only to then go to the show where we'll be on top of each other again. So uh, it's been good, but I, I'm cautiously, not even cautiously optimistic, I'm just cautious at this point. Understood. Yeah, no, it's um, it's crazy to th- even say things like like a pa- pandemic in a past tense, because technically we're not out of a pandemic, though uh, based on a lot of different factors and a lot of different opinions, people have a different uh, opinion on that. Um, I think we're definitely in a stage of we're, learning to coexist with something like the coronavirus or coronaviruses though since it's not the first time we've dealt with one um and i and i but i don't i always have to there is that constant reminder of that well that doesn't mean we're just because we're coexisting doesn't mean we're out of it (laughs) right it just means we're existing with it logically you're one bad cough away you're (laughs) you're, you're one bad cough away from like uh just hearing an e-break in your head (laughs) just being like oh crap yeah all the things that i took for that i took for granted beforehand or didn't realize i was wasn't doing that i should have been doing i guess is the terminology yeah. but cool so no that, that's it's good to see that shows are happening again you know for obviously for people where that's their main source of income i'm sure it's a, a pretty big sigh of relief for them we dabbled into our first event and knock on wood luckily it it went well um we did like an annual sort of you know one day punk festival pre-pandemic and then stopped did something virtual um Mm -hmm. that was kind of tough to do and then we brought it back this summer um and luckily no one called me and said anyone got sick Uh, it was you know wear a mask if you want and it was just all the all the bands uh were really good about everything and the venue was really good about keeping everybody safe so it just felt good um 
Well, so Desmond, you front career day, which is um, yes. how we yes, sort of came to interact. And you have a new record out. I believe if I looked at something today, I apologize if I'm wrong about this. The record's been out for a month where we've always been. Uh, one Correct. month anniversary is today. So congratulations. Mm-hmm. It's the little things. Thank right? you. <laughs> it's They grow up so fast. But, you know, it's been, it's been amazing. Um, these songs lived in my head and and the band's collective head for a long time so it was like uh getting to put it out uh it it it, it's just it's been nice to uh it's been really uh affirming reaffirming you reaching out uh was was super nice just so many people coming out of the blue to reach out to us to say that the album you know uh, really resonated with them from all over has just been I don't know, it's made this past month a blur of just like affirmation. Yeah, no, that that's that's really exciting, and I I, I love when I, I hear that from a band, whether it's a, a new band or an existing band, regardless of where you are in your sort of journey. It's 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 always exciting when you put something new out and you naturally see some people talk want to talk about it, or um, even just give you that hey, this was really cool kind of thing. Um, uh, that that has always been a good feeling for me for bands I've worked with. So I, I, I understand where you're coming from in that. And yeah, I mean, honestly, I really, I really, really like the record. Um, I think it's funny to explore how I sort of came to, to find you. Cause it was, uh, in the least, least expecting way based on my hatred for algorithms and technology. Um, but this time <laughs> it actually brought someone together. And I think that's uh, pretty special. Um, but then, you know, I, uh, so I, I think you've, you've, you've touched on a couple of things with this record. Um, there's a multiple sort of genre, but it's not like, uh, it's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it like fusion. It's not like you, you took rap and rock and put it together and called yourself Limp Bizkit Jr. Like it, it's, it's you, you touch on, there's like, you know, multiple themes, but of like a common thread, like this emo punk pop punk thread but there's there's deviations from it that it's like you still have the root note going you know uh but you 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 changed it up um and i think that really spoke to me because you did it in a very tasteful and sort of uh, authentic way and um so that that was also kind of one of the i wanted to dive into a little bit of that today as well but so yeah just to share again how i came to find you that that sounds creepy but i you know my my police (laughs) every step you take moment um that's the name of that song right that would be really embarrassing if i said Uh, that incorrectly every breath you take (laughs) there it is i'm messing up but that's a that is a lyric yeah it's a lyric it's just not the name of the song okay i was like all right did i just mess up the i mean if 20 people listen to this i'm psyched so um (laughs) that's that's fine but Okay, I wasn't wrong. I just messed up. It wasn't the name of the song. It was the lyric, which is what I was getting at. We'll just mm-hmm. tell, we'll tell myself that. Um, besides the point. So I'm on Apple. I'm an Apple Music person, actually. I don't subscribe to Spotify, though I am involved with Spotify, because when you run a label, you sort of have to have it accessible have to. to look at things and make sure bios are updated and all that shit. But um, I'm an Apple Music subscriber. Um, and I was... I don't remember exactly what band I was listening to at the time, but it was a, a big band. It was probably Blink-182 or something like that. So it was definitely a band that I would say most people listen to. And, you know, I out of nowhere, I was in Shuffle, and one of your songs came on. And I was drawn to it. I was like, oh, this is cool. And, like, and I, I think the thing that was mo- – like, I'm like, who is this band? And I, I, I pull up – obviously, I like look at my phone, and the artwork – really really spoke to me because i immediately was like they must be from new york or have some connection to new york so (laughs) as someone that grew up in new york there was that connection of like oh i want to check this out um but (laughs) there was a i found myself almost having like an existential crisis when i was looking at the artwork um and so i wanted to start there I, i i wanted to hear a little bit more about um you know, I'm, I'm the artist, your we kind of your vision. Like, tell me what what was the inspiration for the artwork? And there's a reason I want to start there, and as it connects to some of the themes in the record. But uh, I, I'd like to start with the artwork because it really took me in, and it, it reaffirms my belief that album artwork matters. Because here was a time with an algorithm and a song, and I looked at the artwork and was immediately kind of dr- you know brought into the project. 
that's that's all. I, that, that's awesome. I'm I'm really glad I get to talk about because I the artwork was kind of lingered and and labored over. So we worked with a friend of ours named Dan Buxa. He is a uh, comic independent comic book artist. He's awesome. He's uh, he's uh, he, he's done merch designs for for some other bands. Um, uh, Moon Tooth uh, in particular is a is a really awesome proggy. Uh, I guess maybe you said metal. That might not be the best. Uh, were but a uh, proggy band that he's also done uh, art for but um, reached out to him he also did the artwork for our uh, 2021 EP uh, Pride was somewhere else and uh, we definitely wanted to go with something that um, spoke to this uh, I mean th so one of the inspiration the the literal inspiration for the artwork uh, there's this, I live in Sunnyside, Queens, which is west, northwestern Queens, uh, not far from Manhattan. It's one of the last exits on the Long Island Expressway before you go into Manhattan. And uh, there's just this, uh, there's this huge cemetery near me. And behind it is, is you can see the whole New York City skyline. And uh, it's just something that always like, it's a it's a sight I see every day or almost every day that just uh, I don't know the the it's so stark all this whole just like mass uh, hill of just tombstones of people that live their lives here and behind it is this bustling uh, you know booming city and uh, I just it just uh, there's something about looking at that every day and just thinking about like how you're you're going and going and going until you're not, and uh, and and all the things that you that uh, you know compel you to have to keep going and going and, and moving on, moving forward. And uh, I wanted the I, I there was something about having that as as imagery to to play with uh, that felt very. Uh, impactful for me for centering kind of just the depending on where you're looking will affect how you're feeling like depending on where you're looking in the frame will kind of uh affect you and um for me uh you know that that was one of the the inspirations and and the uh having the you know someone that looked like the i guess the average queens person the average new yorker a, a, a which i feel like the with how white the genre uh, and all punk subgenres tend to be. I felt like having a depiction that somebody that look, have looked a lot more like me on the picture, just uh, having to keep it moving, um, having to keep keep going, running their errands, and and uh, and carrying with them uh, all the things that uh, go on inside their head. Uh, I, I felt was uh, kind of what I wanted to just be the the framework of of just placing a certain uh, reality, uh, and, 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 uh, real tangible kind of setting to the album. Well, man, you, you fucking did it. <laughs> you, <laughs> you definitely did it. Um, and I, I don't know if it's, uh, hmm. I don't know if it's me getting older and longing for what was in life as the concept of nostalgia tends to sometimes be for people. Uh, getting more existentially speaking, like in a more existential way. Um, but I've just continued to grow and admire artwork, album artwork, more, even more and more, as for some reason, as I've gotten older. Again, I don't know if it's from a nostalgia element or if I've just kind of finally saw through the veil and get why it's so important. It's not that I ever did. I mean, uh, I, always, I always liked artwork and you know i've collected vinyl for quite some time i always really wanted to have a physical copy of something whether it was a tape or a vinyl or, or cd or whatever um but uh, i guess maybe it's just the use of the cell phone too and every day and playing music and streaming and the, the album artwork always being there that maybe it just i took it for granted a little bit as like a consumer mm -hmm. but um with the label and like the records we put out on vinyl and and stuff like that you know i'm usually pretty heavily involved with helping the band make decisions and obviously i'm involved with like the formatting and stuff because i i know what vendors i use for vinyl or tapes or whatever and it's got to get all sequenced together and, and all that um 
but there was something about this one that just really stopped me and i mean there is some bias because like uh, that 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 look that illustrative kind of look is something that is always really interesting to me uh as is like a retro design so like you could capture my interests pretty easily if you're doing something in that but um there was that existential dread of like okay i, I kind of almost got what you were trying to convey on multiple fronts without even knowing you and like thinking <laughs> like even just like the fact that you put the airplane in uh, spoke to me on a very personal level because of how how many flights I've done in and out of that airport and, and seen sort of that kind of view through the highs and lows of my life. This is getting fucking deep, man. I'm sorry. I'm throwing this on you early. No, this is great. I'm just no, saying, I'm, like, this, you have fun. no idea no, who I am. I'm glad. This, this is, is why you yeah, make art, man. This is what happened. Is, like, there was a connection. Um, it's, it's uh, yeah, like, and, and just to build on, on what I said before, uh, like, A, something that I'm always chasing, like, visually as far as album art goes, I, I love that you felt something from looking at it. Cause like that's, uh, I am always chasing the sunny day real estate, uh, diary artwork type of feeling. Like sure. the way, the way you look at the, that cover and it just like, it's illustrative, but like you, you can just, the more you, you linger on it, the more you feel, uh, the more you sense that there, there's something happening um, in the frame, like that uh, was definitely a, a motivating influence. And also the comic book art of this comic book series, uh, Black Hammer, that I believe is Image or Dark Horse. It's one of the not Marvel DC, uh, but still prominent uh, imprints. Uh, but yeah, just very um, emotionally uh, evocative is something that we wanted to go with. Yeah, and I think I think I mean yeah, and I mean I you know from a New York perspective, obviously there were a lot of things that could have brought me in just to be you know somewhat fair uh, to people that maybe don't have the historical or lo, you know the the longitude latitude kind of <laughs> uh, yeah. connection to the to the artwork. Um, but I, I, I when I then listen to the record front to back, there there are a lot of themes that that wave on both sides of the spectrum to a more morose sort of almost depressed, like bringing up like awareness of mental health and, and depression and things like that to life. But then on um, to the other spectrum of uh, a relationship that, that sounds as if it's, it's flourishing and, and sort of the, the concepts of love and, and emotion that come from experiencing that kind of thing, thinking about my favorite song on the record, a new title and, those types of connections and so on and so forth. Um, now, I think music is, uh, there's always a, a lot of what's going on in your life can help you connect to something in, in a different way. Uh, when I think about uh, the, I was talking with one of our, one of the guys on our, our label and a friend of mine, we were talking about the Gaslight Anthem, which is one of our favorite bands. Um, when Gaslight first came out, Oh eight ish with fifty nine sounds. So I mean, they already had a record out before then. But when they kind of started hitting the mainstream, I I didn't connect with the music nearly as much as I did like four years later. And interesting. Um, my my friend is always like, yeah, but think about where you were in your life when when that when that sh started happening for you. And like everyone jokes with me, they ask me, what's your favorite Gaslight record? I always have the same answer. And this was not the first record. I, I knew them for years and years before this. But my favorite Gaslight Anthem record is Get Hurt. Mm -hmm. It's straight up get hurt. I think it's their that's, best record, and that's one of their 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 later ones, right? Yeah, it was the last one before this current reunion, and it was also the one that got the most uh, negative press, I guess. And it wasn't considered like a like a fan favorite, and some people blame it for like deroding, you know, like the band down this path or whatever. And for me, it's like if I ever met Brian, I'd be like, "This is a fucking masterpiece." But my friend always hits me with. Sure, he doesn't necessarily disagree with that statement, but the point he's trying to make is it's where you were in your life that brought you that connection. And he's right. When I think yeah. about where I was when that record came out, the things that I was going through, I connected with that record in a very similar way. And so, like, a, a new title was something that did that for me. Um, so, I, awesome. I think that connection with, like, music, which is art, and where a person is in their life can can sort of frame the 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 narrative a little bit. But ultimately you know when i was just connecting with the artwork i'm like there's something here that i want to explore and then listening to all the songs it you know may maybe this character is walking to this person that a new title was written about 
even though it is a morose photo, there was a lot of ways to kind of look through interpret the, it, yeah, interpret sure. the sense of just because he's walking past this fucking cemetery, probably thinking like, wow, this is what I'm going to do every day until I end up there. But who, what are, what is this person walking towards? Because there are those positive themes on the record as well. So as a listener, I just, I wanted to share that because I, I thought it was pretty interesting and you probably think I'm like a total nerd that I got this no, deep into no, this, great. but, but that, that no, I love it, man. <laughs> this is what you make this shit for. I, yeah. Like I, I, the, a lot of this stuff is influenced by things that I've felt or lived and, and it's just, uh, I, I always talk about how I think when you create, it's it's because you're dealing with things in, inside of you, and when you put it out into the world, it's like uh, you're you're creating a bridge, and when someone receives it, the bridge is completed, and and that is just always just like literally. A, a random uh, person that I don't know DMing me uh, any day, like uh, about the ju- just cu- just you know just check. There's a guy that DM'd me a couple days ago that was like, "Hey man, I don't really listen to pop punk or emo anymore. I just turned 34 today, uh, but hearing this hearing this album sounds like catching up with an old friend." And I was like, "Damn man." you made my night like thanks so much and like for me shit like that is just the bridge being connected uh, it, it, it's like the it's the completion of processing these feelings as to the extent that uh i can process them yeah no that's awesome and i i i, sh- I certainly can see why those those messages are coming so Tell me a little bit about like how you made the record, like the writing, the recording. Talk a little bit about the band. You know, g- give us kind of that that overview. For sure. So, so the band, um, like if you go on streaming sites, you'll see that that we had we put out a demo, which is uh, almost entirely a different lineup in 2018, just two songs. But uh, that was just to try the idea, and I think if you've listened to it, you might hear hints of the band that would come to be. But um, we the the lineup as it as it exists now largely uh, was was put together pretty much in the year uh, leading up to the pandemic starting like l- late winter early spring 2019 to uh, late winter early spring 2020 was just us uh, connecting with. Jacob, our guitarist, over uh, like this Facebook em- uh, Facebook group called Long Island Emo, I think. I think it was Long Island Emo, and just he was wanting to jam, try, uh, write new music, and I was like, all right, you know what? I, I still wanted to write some more songs. The demo lineup didn't quite work out, but um, still want to write songs. So linked up with him uh, and our. Uh, previous drummer brian uh mcelwain uh who was on the the demo lineup but we were jamming we linked up with andrew our bassist from from staten island and from craig we and we found him via craigslist so really it was a talk about a really narrow chance of 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 making that work but it did um and we we just jammed a bunch and uh we we were like let's just take our time writing songs and we we recorded an EP, but then we were like, okay, let's let's first play some shows a bit before we put this out, and then we were going to start playing shows in late March 2020. But then that didn't happen because of the pandemic. So then we had to just sit on those songs, and uh, we'd already had other songs written. Um, we had no problem, and if only actually, we're already pretty much completely written before the pandemic started. They just came together really quickly in in a couple practices, like in like maybe February 2020. And uh, but we had to just keep writing um, remotely. Jacob and I, like after a couple of months of the pandemic, Jacob and I would meet up to just acoustically work on things outdoors. And uh, we would just uh, we'd have a couple sessions where we'd bring it to the the to Brian and Andrew, um, where we would go to Brian's family uh, has a property upstate that we would go up to for a weekend and be like all right here are the ideas that that and we send it before uh, beforehand but these the ideas that Jacob and I had had kind of built you know loose um 
part A, part B, part A, part B, bridge, you know, or, or even just sometimes it's just part A, part B, and then see what more we could build in. And, uh, you know, that's where we would kind of craft the songs into the into studio ready. And then last summer slash fall from September through October or August through uh, October of 2021, we went to our friend Matt Lagatudas uh, to track the record. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, so really we these songs were done being recorded in October 2021. And it's just been a, a long you know, after the mixing and mastering, just a long waiting game to drop it this summer. And uh, that's how we got, that's the shortest way of telling the history and, and, and uh, just facts of the, of the, of the uh, recording. Yeah, no, that, that's awesome. Um, so it sounds like a lot of time, sort of, whether it was, good time or bad time given what was going on in the world <laughs> sort yeah. of sort of happened through all this so you were writing songs that sort of numerous phases of a given year or two years which uh i can only imagine including a, a pandemic there was a lot of ups and downs to to those times was the record like from a songwriting perspective or even just like lyr- lyrically was the, would you say the record was impacted by that was was there because w- w- you know like i do sense some ups and downs in the songs and i, I always wonder is this like a, a covid record like are you were you really in that frame of mind where we are writing in a pandemic so it is um parts of it yes like i would say um i would say that um like a song, like a song, like it, it never ends. Like that song, it is a result of me just sitting on my couch late at night during all of the uh, Black Lives Matter, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor protests, and just feeling, feeling the, uh, frankly, feeling a bit hopeless at that. That you know that that state violence keeps growing and growing and consolidating and the the dispossessed and the and the powerless and the underprivileged are just becoming further decimated and just this feeling of like this is a this is an inherently violent country and just feeling like registering for the first time in my life like okay what if nonviolence really isn't the answer? What does that mean? And what do we do with that feeling? Like that's a song that's like lingering on a very dark place, even if it's maybe the poppiest song on the album, like musically, that's, you know, that's the headspace of that. But, but, um, you know, some of it is, and kind of that's where the title where we've always been has come up in a way it's influenced by, things that were felt or experienced or observed during the pandemic but a lot of these issues that we have a lot of these headspaces that we we feel are things that you know are are um just kind of unfortunately uh not new it's 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 uh the the society that we've 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 lived in has more or less kind of been these same type of stressors and uh and uh antagonists and and uh and um so it it is definitely Im- impacted by the, pa- the the pandemic is how this album came to be although i think some of these songs a, lo- a lot of the things these songs are about are things that i always i wanted to write about um for a while um even before the pandemic and even if the pandemic hadn't happened like i said no problem even with all of its, you know, uh, social commentary and its its racial commentary from the perspective of being a uh, Filipino American, uh, an Asian American, a, a non-white person that grew up in the suburbs and has come to realize how many people tokenized me or, or, or uh, you know, kind of had that whole model minority uh, approach to me growing up, uh, like, that was a song that I said, you know, that, that was written before the pandemic and, and, uh, like right before the pandemic, 
uh, and If Only was a song, despite it being about the impossibility of of fully grieving when you are constantly having to console other people because we live in a place of nonstop loss and death, even though that seems like that that was written because of the way the pandemic made that just such an ongoing thought. It was written before that because, uh, you know, a lot of that was from the headspace of both get, start, starting to get a little bit older. So friends, parents are dying, not necessarily um, from horrible accidents. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Nope. Sometimes just people being older, losing grandparents. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, and the amount of rampant overdoses that, that we see throughout this country, especially Long Island. Um, and just not knowing how do you feeling ill-equipped to console people because it's a lot to register when you yourself are grieving these losses yourself. And, and so it's like one of those things where um, the pandemic, obviously the pandemic made it that much more of a motivation to like, we have to have these songs out because like I was already feeling this way and I'm feeling this way that much more already. So like, let's do this. And, uh, and in a way also the pandemic the fact of life being altered in a way where you can't really go that many places or do that many things anymore. You never had, had more time to really craft the writing of these songs and really get into like a, a granular um, approach to the song dynamics and, and, and playing off of each other. Yeah. I mean, just a lot to unpack there. I, I, I think one, one thing that is really important to remember is the world was really fucked up before COVID even happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it's also, and I, and I, I take blame for this because I, I think it sometimes just, unfortunately it's really simple to say things like, Oh, during the pandemic time or during the pandemic or whatever, but the global pandemic, uh, that being like the, the instance of COVID-19, the virus, shouldn't be coupled with um, a lot of the other tragic things that happened in 2020 and 2020 run, 2021. The social injustice situation, um, Breonna Taylor, you mentioned George Floyd, like all these these things that, that happened. Um, those are issues that deserve to be not categorized with COVID-19 the virus because in in my opinion it's even a bigger issue so um, I find myself guilty of sometimes summing that whole there was just a lot of bad fucking shit that happened in 2020 and 2021 sure. that you're like oh it's all it was COVID like fuck no like this has nothing to do with the virus this is really fucked up shit that's going yeah. on in our world and we're just oh it's COVID like you know what I mean it's not it has nothing fucking to do with it so but, uh, yeah, yeah go ahead. People, people did pay attention I, I think the fact that people that that kind of lull in distraction that I kind of um, mentioned before that that lull in just um, that lull in, in being able to to do things that made people be able to to actually ruminate on these horrible stories and, and inequities in in ways that similar scenarios in the past would they'd hear once if if they'd hear it all they'd go. Wow, that's horrible. And then there wouldn't be any sustained reaction to it. Like, th that is part of why I, you know, that's part of why the album leads with views from the 516, which is, you know, I, I used to work for the ACLU of New York in their Long Island offices in Hampstead. So I would drive through Garden City, very, very nice uh, town, very well off town, huge houses, huge schools. Um, and then right next town over Hempstead, d demographic change goes from white to black and brown. It goes from the schools looking amazing to the schools literally being in disrepair. The, the you know, uh, p like constant policing, over-policing, yet lack of any sort of economic uh, um, investment in the, in the area. And, and just, uh, you know... It's been that th these disparities and inequities have been there 
forever. And it's and so in this time of like, oh, we we have to start noticing these things. Like it's not just noticing them is not enough. It's about actually having to engage with that world rather than it being this tragic TV show. That's a really good point. You know, um, I feel like throughout being forced to stay home and to, you know, being more on the, maybe the internet was your, your, your vessel because you couldn't really go out and experience things in, in real time. You had to see it through the lens of social media or, television or a film or whatever which i'm not saying all of that's bad like i'm a film fan i i get i like the idea of storytelling you know um i i think it i think it shines light on uh i think it's possible for things to become a little bit too like trivial um like oh let's make a show about this because there's more people at home watching but not because it's a topic that really should be discussed regardless of whether there's a virus killing people or not um, so I do think the authenticity sometimes in uh, situations like that can can harm some content or people with like a really like and and it's and it's because to your point there's just more eyes on you there so there's yeah. more opinions about what you're doing or what you're trying to do and there's even some things that like I did through the through the pandemic with some bands and things like that where like oh man fuck like this kind of wasn't really taken the way that we meant it like it was authentic in heart. But yeah. there was just a lot of people watching, not in the sense of like, oh, we had a lot of view- viewership on this particular piece of content, but more of just like, wow, everyone's on the internet seeing a lot of shit is what I'm getting at. Um, and we're like, oh, fuck, that kind of came off like maybe we were, you know, leading the witness a little bit or or uh, it came off not as authentic as it really truly was meant to be. Um, fucking art's hard, man. That's 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 for yeah. sure. Yeah, no, for sure. So, um Tell me a little bit about the, you know, recording of the the record. Uh, how how did you guys do? I know you mentioned you went to somebody that that you knew. Uh, yeah. Looks like you record over a couple of months. Just kind of like sum up the recording experience. Kind of anything, we, anything fun that happened or funny that happened and all the good stuff. It was so it's so uh, Matt's setup is really it's really interesting. It's in the. Uh, it's in the basement. It's a. It's in the basement. And it's like a built. Uh, he's really built it up. It, it's in the basement of his, uh, underneath his dad's uh, carpet business, and uh, the drums actually get tracked late at night after the after the business closes in the, like on the floor. He sets up the the drums on the like the display floor because of all the all the carpeting around the the room like kind of really supports yeah, that the, sounds amazing the, actually the, the drumming yeah. yeah and like so that was just it, it, it's just like you're, you're like watching brian just absolutely rip and then like oh yeah i'm i'm it's 10 30 at night on a sunday in mineola and i'm in i'm in the middle of a carpet showroom like this is <laughs> so strange but it's uh like that was super fun we recorded in uh batches of of five um and like to the point of the writing like the some of the writing came down to like right before the day of uh like finishing a couple lyrics here and there but like uh we we recorded in in august we did we did views we did no problem we did it never ends we did if only and parties over and uh, those are songs that we had had done 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 those were the the five that we had done 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 and uh that that went really smooth and i just remember i remember matt just sending us the the bounces of the uh, of the five songs. I think, I think it was like, maybe it was like one day drumming, maybe like, I'm not, I'm, maybe a day or two for guitar and, and bass, um, for that batch might not have even needed multiples of that. And then I think did the vocals in two days for, for that batch of songs. And I remember driving to Pennsylvania for the weekend, um, uh, with my fiance uh, Lauren and and Matt had just sent us a bounce 
of the of the um, songs right before right before I went down, and I think I can't remember if I listened or not because I, I I always get I always like tense up once I get bounces of songs. I either go right in or I like. I set a time and 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 uh, a day. Usually, like a di- I set a time like either later that day or or, or the next day to, to listen. But um, I think we listened on the drive down, and I just remember being like, "Damn, I feel really." This isn't even this isn't even necessarily done because I, I think I might have um, retracted a verse of I wanted to get like a stronger verse for parties over. Um, and maybe I wanted to like get a, a stronger line for one of the lines and, and no problem. But I just remember being like, all right, this feels really good. And, I, and, and this feels really promising. And, and uh, just remember like, um, you know, driving, not being able to see like the band thread, but then like, you know, finishing driving and seeing like everybody just uh, – seeing that everybody else in the band had had a similar experience of listening back to those bounces was just like, all right, cool. This is a really fun vibe. And then, and then, um, then, then the second batch of songs we did after having a trying to think we had, we, we had a, I think in maybe it was September or, I don't remember, but but we 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 I think we, we had a couple practice sessions just to to shore up the other um, batch of songs, the other batch of five, and that was actually more nerve wracking because it was like, oh man, we got five more songs to do. We got to really nail these ones too, and uh, and <laughs> there was just this there was just this feeling of like having to fight the anxiety and like all those negative mental tendencies to just like pick apart yourself before you've even done the thing. Um, that like, uh, those still pretty similarly, like it was about maybe a a day for drums and then maybe a a day or two, um, each for everything else. Um, I think, yeah, I think we had two, two vocal sessions and then a like one hangover day to like just finish it, tidy up some odds and ends. And then Jacob did like some last, he does so much shredding on this album, just making sure we got every possible lick possible in there. Um, but just being done in October, like finishing tracking in October and just being like, well, think we've done something really good i hope it ends up being as good as it feels because if not i'm going to lose my mind <laughs> the existential dread of oh fuck did i fuck this up or yes am I the only yes. one that think it's gonna be cool or <laughs> well this feeling. this feels good now will this feel good when i actually hear it you know well well is this as good well or is this a good moment but yeah, it, that was that was kind of the recording process, and and it's funny thinking back about that now. Of like, it's nice to know that we actually did end up good, but it was just I remember feeling that feeling of like, all right, I think we've done good, but I hope I hope I stay feeling that way. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's that's a humble thing to. I don't know. I have a wide range of emotions with some of the artists here at 59 X records. Um, I have some bands that are like way too confident (laughs) and are like, yeah, this is fucking gold. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's, it's not, I'm sorry, (laughs) but Hey, I'm just one guy. Um, and then I have other bands that that are like way too, they like lack the total confidence. Like they're so insecure about it. I'm like, this is fucking awesome. They're like, eh, kind of sucks and i'm like <laughs> okay you fuck you so uh, i yeah. and, there, and it's always it's tough when I, I actually got to ask this question once um it's uh both are equally difficult to to work with as like a partner that's like trying to do the old school label thing where it's like actually really someone that generally cares about your music and wants to see it succeed it's just as difficult a conversation to be like hey you're not that good come down to earth as it is to say, you're way fucking better than you think you are. You have to have more confidence. That conversation is equally as hard when it comes to bands, sure. in my experience. 
Um, oh, for sure. Yeah. And that's just, but it, but it keeps it, it keeps it interesting. And, and so I feel very connected to most of the releases that we put out. Um, and you know, a lot of the records I've recorded here in my studio in Atlanta. So I was, I was involved from like demoing all the way to the end. Some records, maybe I just mix some records. Maybe I don't do anything to, but regardless of the situation, um, I usually hear the music way before anyone else would hear it besides the band. Um, so it's always interesting where like, I'm thinking about a record that came out in June that we finished recording in like September, finished mixing and mastering in October. So then you're talking about like October through June of like no one hearing anything, but me listening to this record like all the time. And then it comes out and you finally get to see people's reaction to it. Um, that's always an interesting thing for me, especially if I'm like, Hmm, I wonder how this, like, I think this record's fucking great. I wonder if people are going to like it or wow. I actually didn't think this was as good as, as it ended up being or the response. Cause I'm not always right either. That's why I just yeah. know, sign bands. I fucking like, and think they put out cool music regardless of what, where they're at and their journey. So that, that feeling is always exciting, whether it, you're as an artist or even as a producer or a label, you you are anxious to see like, does everyone else see what I see? Even if what I see is, negative <laughs> for sure so what's your favorite song on the record Jeez, tough, that tough, is yeah tough it's not it's a it's, fucked up question but you it's know. a it's a tough it's a it's a tough question um i'll say that the songs that i feel uh i'll just mention a couple songs that um for different reasons one 21,000 Questions, um, the album closer, I just was, I'm so proud of how that song came out. I, I think, like, the songwriting on it is probably the most coherent and developed on the on the album as far as, like, the parts are kind of different from each other, yet all thematically flow well and, and pop at the right places. Um and just writing a song, writing a, a song, that's a song that's about love, about, it's about love, but it's also about, like, balancing love amidst a world of chaos mm. and and not letting, I don't know, not, not letting the world, not, not being blind to that world, staying, like, you know, within the fight yet being so grateful for the the way the the love that you have for uh a special person will can humanize you throughout that like that is um i'm really glad to to have written that song with the band and and uh you know when when we the the you know you always have fake names for songs and that that song was for the longest time called Spider-Man because of it was like, you know what? Let's have this song be our like vindicated by Dashboard Confessional. That's that's kind of the the you know launch that we 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 want this song to kind of have that that space for it to be in. So that's one song. Thanks for listening is just it's a different song. It's it's the slowest song. It's the kind of acoustic leaning one, but it explodes in a third eye blind type of way. And to write a song about like burnout about just the difficulties of trying to you know be an advocate or just try to be someone that's trying to take on these fucking problems in the world and feeling like i'm not getting as far as i want people aren't getting people i know aren't getting on board to the extent that i i want them to and and being honest about how frustrating i find that but also registering that registering on some level that if I'm constantly imploding because all this shit is wearing me out all the time, how the hell, why the hell would anybody want to jo join? <laughs> why, why would anyone, anyone want to join the fight with me? Um, and like just getting to play that out in song was really, was really nice. Um, Enough Pictures is a song that I'm really happy and proud of because of uh, so many of the songs I've, I've I've written songs before about death and loss and and it felt like to write a song 
about my mom, about my family members that have been there for me, about giving people the roses while they can still smell them was a song that I really wanted to do and I'm glad I got to do. And, um, and no problem just, uh, you know, getting to write a, a, just a clean two minute pop punk heater that musically sounds like those like, you know, starting line newfound glory songs I grew up on, but gets to be about taking on a fight against marginalization and tokenization and, uh, you know, racial tropes felt like, you know, if I'm going to still make music in my thirties, then like, let's, let's, let's bring to the table things that, that have been kept off the table for way too long. Um, as far as like what this genre usually speaks on and, and, and goes to. I, I love the way you were, I love where you, where your head went with that and just the way you put that because we're, we grew up with a similar timeline. So the bands that were blowing up on Long Island at the time, that culture feels different than the culture that of, of those same bands, not necessarily specific to Long Island. Just we were really lucky that we grew up, not even just Long Island, but if you talk about like the full Connecticut to Philly, it's like shape. Including Long Island, yeah, New York. Yeah, I mean, from like 2000 to 2010. Fuck. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's nuts. Like e almost every drive-through band on the East Coast, you know, like yeah, I mean, oh it's my just, god, it's just just victory, same victory. I mean, just man, I can't wait to fucking tell my kid. Like, yeah, I remember when like Taking Back Sunday broke up the first time. <laughs> you know, like I, oh, yeah. like I, I was at Stray Light Runs like second show. Like I was a hell middle school. yeah, like I, I remember I going to downtown and, and, and seeing them play, and it was like their second fucking show. Um, you know, the uh, there's just a lot of if you're into emo and post hardcore and even and in hardcore too and all that, like it just it, different different genres. Is what I'm getting at, there's a lot of fucking music in the New York tri-state area, um, and I don't feel like there's a lot. Of, I think California will always kind of have that community. Um, we don't fucking have that down here, and that's part of the reason I'm still doing this crazy thing, like fucking running a record label, because I'm trying to. That's build awesome. It. I'm trying to build it down. That's here. awesome, man. That's um, great. But uh, I fucking miss that, and I'm really, really glad that I was able to go to shows and be in bands and do that kind of stuff during that era. Um, but it's it, it, it it's tough. So hearing you and, and like I think the the scene that does exist at a national scale now, I don't think is talking about the issues, the way that some of those other bands were bringing it to life. And, and I don't mean like who they stand for as people. I'm talking about lyrical content. I'm talking about yeah. like the messages of, of the time. And especially in earlier punk music and punk rock music, you know, there was, a, uh, I think a bit more angstiness to calling out the, what's really going on in the world versus, uh, you know, writing the next love song which is okay too it's just it seems yeah. like it really skewed more to i'm fucked up i'm on drugs let's <laughs> let's let's sing kumbaya together and i'm like what happened to the shit that i wanted to get tattooed on me when i was fucking 16 yeah know? yeah i mean t to that end like literally one of the one of the the um formulas and like premises for how we wanted this album to sound was it's like what if you took like you know those those banging like two thousand like one to two thousand like six seven warp tour sounds, and you know you'd have like the bands that were about politics uh, expressed various different ways, like Bad Religion or No Effects or Rise Against or Thursday, and then you had the bands that were like really just catchy, great anthemic music like Newfound Glory, like Starting Line. Like, um, uh, I'm trying to think of other, other bands that, th those are obviously too huge. Blink, although obviously they were so huge that that's warped or even associating them with warped in that time frame doesn't quite, you know, work. Motion City Soundtrack, another huge influence on this record, Sonic. Oh, I was going to say to you, I definitely, yeah. like in enough pictures, I totally get Motion City vibes. 
Motion City is, is so much. A lot of that's probably um, Andrew's uh, little synth part that he he plays in the uh, in the chorus there. But uh, yeah, like like if if you took those those two sounds, like what if those stages just collided into each other and you and you retained I love it. Yeah. like some and and that's kind of what we went with because it's like you know th- th- this music is fun, but these times are not, and uh, it, it's it's time to. Not just you know, one. It's time to to bring that into the music, but it's also time to make the music um, be involved in those things. Like you know, we our shows, we always have a QR code at our at our table, and I always change it uh, before each show so that it is relevant to maybe some of the, the the things that are going on in the discourse or in current events that people are talking about and connecting it to. Here are here are organizations that you can work with on a weekly basis or volunteer with that are going to protest police brutality, that are going to protest, um, you know, uh, imperialism, that are going to protest uh, uh, abortion rights or, or uh, LGBT rights or, or anything like that. Like th- these are groups that you can get involved in here and now, not just sing about it, not just feel a way about it at the show, but actually take on these conditions in the world as they exist um, because it's just, you know, a lot of talk within the pandemic was like, man, once things get back, I can't wait for things to get back. And, and, you know, the way things were had a lot of, a lot of lackings to them. So making, making more of this opportunity, we're lucky to have not died. I've lost people. I'm sure you've lost people or know people that have lost people in the pandemic. You know, we... It, it, we have a shot to do things again. Let's let's do let's do them better than we did them before, and and that is kind of just a driving force for this project. Oh, I really appreciate your passion. Um, a lot of us and a lot of people we know are, are sort of on borrowed time. Although I guess in theory we all are in some way. Yes. Um, yes. But yeah, I mean, there to, for some of us even even more so. So I mean, you're you're right. There is a. A, fate, a fatalistic sort of attitude that I think I'm seeing a lot in musicians and entrepreneurs and things like that um, because there is the sense of like, well, fuck, you know, one day I could come home from work and turn on the news and find out something's airborne and trying to fucking kill me. <laughs> like, so yeah. let's let, you know, maybe this, this little issue that uh, I was being a little selfish about isn't really that meaningful in the grand scheme of things. I'm going to go out there and do something that matters, you know? Um, so I know that you do a lot of work and advocacy work and things like that. Talk to me a little bit about that. What are some organizations that you're really excited about, whether you work with them or not? And just give us a little update on what's going on in that front. So for sure, I, um, so I'm a member of a, of a group called the New York Committee for Human Rights in the Philippines. Um, that is a kind of a solidarity uh, group that is a, the New York um, chapter of an international chapter called the International Committee for Human Rights in the Philippines, ICHRP, I-C-H-R-P. Um, I'll send you the the uh, socials for that because there's chapters all over the country. Um, but a lot of that work has to do with solidarity with the people's struggle in the Philippines. Uh, the Philippines um, has been a colony and then a basically a neo colony for pretty much most of its existence. The struggle for the Filipino people uh, throughout history, whether it was under Spanish rule, Japanese rule, American rule, uh, there has never been true sovereignty for the Filipino people um, economically. There is so much of their 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 resources are owned by U.S. corporations or dr- for mining or drilling purposes. Uh, they now are, you know, part of this proxy war between U.S. and China for who can really who's going to have most influence over the region. It's not about human rights like the the U.S. would say, because the U.S. has spent billions of taxpayer money to fund the uh, police and the armed forces of the Philippines, which have mostly just used those on, on uh, the people of the Philippines um, in, in their drug war. In, against land defenders, uh, against uh, trade unionists that are trying to organize for better wages. Um, 
And uh, so a lot of the work that we do has to do with uh, something called the Philippine Human Rights Act, which is a bill that's in, in the U.S. Congress that seeks to end U.S. taxpayer money going to the Philippines um, until the drug war ends, until the extrajudicial killings end, uh, and until the, the state forces that have brought those about um, are held to account. So that is a the main one that I, 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 I'm part of, but I also uh, organize with uh, DSA, um, Democratic Socialists of America. Um, we a lot of what I do is with the anti-war working group, which is the anti-imperialist, anti-military industrial complex working group. But I also have done some mutual aid work with them in in Queens, um, and I little bit lapsed in the Queen's DSA, uh, just because, as maybe this podcast has given the sense of, got a lot going on, um, so, so I only have so much time, um, but that is, you know, for all the frustrations with um, organized politics, electoral politics, as flawed and limited as voting can be and can feel, it does feel that if you are going to be involved in, in, in structural politics, uh, DSA is probably the best place to follow and stay engaged with and find candidates uh, that are actually going to be involved in politics for people and not uh, corporations. I appreciate sharing all that. No, and I, I, I love your passion. It's, it's just the honest truth of there's a lot of shit going on in this world and a lot of a lot of bad shit going on in this world that we don't we don't think about on a daily basis so uh appreciate your your passion i could hear it just in your voice while talking about everything because i think that's uh important to to educate people on the reality of what what goes on outside of your sort of four walls you know for sure so um what are some of the plans with with career day you know um how far are you guys trying to take this? Any touring plans, whatever that word means, post COVID, you know, what's, yeah. what's, what's the deal? Would love to. I mean, you know, honestly, I, I'd love to take this everywhere. Literally I, to me, cause the, these fights of inequity, there's, there's all sorts of disparity. Disparity is a global thing. This is all part of the way capital works in our world of just haves and have nots. And, and the people that that have uh, fortifying and deprive fortifying their riches and, and depriving everybody else and everybody else being left to fight amongst themselves. So I'd love to bring this everywhere. Um, broadly speaking, uh, specifically, we, we've started to play shows. We we uh, we um, are playing in uh, Boston next month. Um, we're trying to book New England. Uh, we we are supposed to play. We were supposed to play Philly for our release weekend, but um, show fell through last minute, um, unfortunately. But we are going to be there probably at some point this fall or winter. So I'm really excited about that. Really, the goal is like, you know, 2023. Would love to be able to at least get. Um, the Midwest and East Coast uh, covered through various parts of it. But uh, if we're able to get onto some of these festivals that are in other corners of the country or coasts, uh, you know, we, we'd love to make it work just because we, there's a certain, I don't know, there's an energy to this music and to this, the commentary of the album that we really just want to experience with more people because, you know, Getting to play it home here in, in in the city has been great. Getting uh, we we played to we played a new a New Brunswick basement show, and that was you know with with the exception of, of Jimmy, my friend that booked it, like complete strangers. But that that basement was just bouncing up and down, and uh, that was just like such a great feeling of just like you know what, let's bring this to as many people as we can. So Those that's, are the best uh, shows, man. Those are the best shows. <laughs> It's 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 uh, we're we're trying to take it take it uh, everywhere. Hopefully, I get to get to hit at Atlanta. Big Hot fan of the show. Atlanta, yeah. Big big fan that. of the show. Uh, oh, big yeah. fan of uh, Adult yeah. Swim. Although they recently, I heard Adult Swim is no longer there. I heard they they took down the William Street Memorial. Is that true? I don't know. That's fucked up. I did not hear that. 
I, I, I never got to see it, so I, I, I'm upset if that's true. Adult I don't Swim know. is, I'm gonna have to is a huge influence on this band. Um, so uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force is Aqua definitely... Teen. My wife got of, me into that shit, and it's oh fucking my goodness. wild, man. That's it's wild great. stuff. It's a spark something nice and just let it, let, let it ride. And uh, that, that, that's, that's my type of That's exactly what she said. She was like, you just need to... She's like, trust me on this one. I'm like, oh, I get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At first, but, I'm like, yeah. wait. And then 30 minutes later, I'm like, oh, I fucking get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The edible kicks in, and, and then you, you remember that shows don't need to be about anything or matter. No, you just need flying and, uh, french fries and shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, no, we'd love to have you. Let us know. We'll get something set up. There's, there's a couple of folks here that, that, that know what's up. So, yeah, that would be a lot sure. of fun. Um, all right, so I'm going to go into sort of the last portion here where uh, I tend to ask some really random fucking questions uh, that you have no idea that I'm about to ask. And um, I thought a little bit about – I try to tailor it somewhat to the to the individual. So I, you know, Facebook stalked you or whatever that terminology is these days of like, oh, trying mm-hmm. to get to know Desmond a little bit without knowing Desmond and, and yeah. see if some of these would resonate with you. Um, so I know you're a fan of hockey. What yes. is what is the craziest hockey game you've ever seen? And so I'm a big Islander fan. Oh, sorry. No, is, and I was part two. No, I was gonna since that was kind of open ended. It could be either in person or that you saw like on TV or something. It didn't have to just be like, oh, I was at the game. Yeah. Yeah, no. Well, I, I was at this game. Uh, it was 2021 playoffs. The Islanders were in the Eastern Conference Finals, and uh, they. Uh, it was, how'd it go down? They were leading, uh, three, nothing going into the third period against the defending cup champs, Tampa Bay lightning. They're looking amazing. L- the lightning get one goal. Okay. It's three, one, but the Islanders still looking good. Then it becomes three, two with like five minutes left and the lightning just pouring it on, just like attacking, uh, the Islanders goalie is making insane saves, gets to the final minute, gets to the, the, the Lightning pull their goalie. They have an extra attacker, six on five against the Islanders. You know, the Islanders look like they're going to pull it out. They have the puck in behind their own net. They have the puck with 10 seconds left. They really can just flip it out, and they'll be set. They try to rim it around the boards. Uh, the player on the Lightning block it, blocks it down, throws it to, to the 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 slot right in front of the net. This defenseman for the Lightning is coming in, takes the puck. There's like five seconds left. It looks like, okay, you know, there's barely any time, or there's like three seconds left, and it's like, okay, he probably doesn't have enough time. The the player on the Lightning pulls the puck on his, like, from forehand to his backhand, and he spins around. He does a spinorama, a crazy move, and by doing that, now he's changed the angle entirely. The goalie has slid out of the net, so it's a wide open net. My like everybody's heart just like falls, like, oh my god, the Islanders just blew it. And then but out of nowhere, this defenseman on the Islanders comes sliding, blocks the puck on the goal line as time expires. And like nobody knows what happens. Uh, if you look up like Islanders, Ryan like Islanders game four lightning block you'll see, like, it's a buzzer-beater block on the goal line. And, like, it took, like, a full, like, second for it to register what happened because so much happened of, like, so many crazy high-end skill plays happened right down to this guy making a block with his, like, hand, like, with like as, as time was expiring. And, like, I, I never will see, short of being at, like, the Islanders winning the Cup, I'll never see something that crazy again. Wow, I appreciate the detail, dude. <laughs> like it was nuts. No, that that's awesome. And so I don't know much about hockey, but I'm tracking with you, like as to what what's going on. And um, it, it, it does, to your point, sound like something that you you don't typically ever ever see, and that can really stand out as like, oh wow, that was a crazy and memorable the stakes thing. Yeah, yeah yeah it was the stakes nuts. yeah like the the whole situation was just ripe for being like holy fucking shit and that's what's really cool about i think sports and competitive sports i mean um my my lack of knowledge around hockey isn't really anything personal i think maybe i just never really was exposed to it enough or um 
took the time to, to, to better understand it. But one thing that I always appreciated as like a very, very, very casual watcher, I, I like the pace of the game. The pace of the game works with my personality a lot um, versus, say, like golf. <laughs> not not so much. For sure. My of course. Of course. Um, uh, so that's that's really cool. I appreciate sharing that. So next question. Um, clearly, you're very passionate about uh, music and advocacy and, and, and those types of things. So I'm, I'm kind of more looking for something that maybe we someone wouldn't necessarily know about you if they if they knew you like or you were talking on a podcast kind of thing but if music wasn't the thing like if you weren't using music as sort of the outlet uh for a lot of what's going on in your head you know what would you be doing instead you know i if not that then as far as like outlet for commentary i probably would either be looking at the way like time has has played out and 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 culture i'd probably either be a youtuber or a uh a a um like a long form like substack type uh essayist i think like that would be my like creative outlet um i i i i almost said i i would just become an Islander podcaster guy, which I, I, I do have an Islander podcast called Through the Island Podcast, uh, but that wouldn't be creative, although I do try to kind of push uh, progressive value there just because if you, talk, if you think punk is sorely lacking, that uh, hockey is, uh, is in the Stone Age as far as that goes, but... Um, but yeah, I, I, as far as outlets, definitely either like an essayist or a a kind of like a video essayist. Probably. I don't like the essayist. I haven't heard that word in a long time. Essayist. I like that. Awesome. Good. I, good answer. I like it. All right. Last one. So, what is your favorite band that you're most afraid to admit is your favorite band, aka? Like, what is your guilty hmm. pleasure band? That like, I, I, I mean, I, <laughs> it's like a weird question. I, I just like you're at a bar with friends and like something comes on and everyone's like laughing about it and they're like, "What do you think?" You're like, "Actually, I really fucking like this band." Kind of moment. <laughs> I I, un- I I unapologetically like I, I don't really have guilty pleasures. I, I'm, I'm trying to think though, like, what are bands that I like that like my friends like I, I have like almost no so i guess this isn't guilty pleasure but this is probably random or or like unexpected like my one of my favorite favorite um writers ever performers is uh jackson brown i i like love listening to jackson brown i think I, i love his voice uh but like the songs are just um have so much the lyrics are great, and there's just um, there's something about how well his songs are written that it almost feels like a movie. Almost feels like a movie, like, or almost feels like you're simulating the feeling. Even if you, you know, uh, uh, I wasn't alive in the '60s, so I, I don't know what it was like, but it, it kind of places me in that and uh that is like I, I went to my friend and i in 2015 or 14 saw jackson brown in connecticut and we were the only people that were not like 55 or older at that show and it was like really fun <laughs> oh that's awesome i, I love that to, to give you context as to where this came up for me recently, um, I thought about it because I was talking to my, I was talking to my buddy the other day, and I randomly got on the topic of like I said to him, and <laughs> this is funny. Now, now that I think about how he took this because of how random it was, it's kind of what made me think about this. Um, I said to him, I was like, you know, I think this whole Saint Anger snare thing is a bit ridiculous. I was like, I don't think it sounds that bad. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, it's it's not a snare issue. It's a mix issue. I'm like, the, the fucking mixing fucked this up. Like, tonally, there are so many things we could have done with that snare drum. And he just is silent and says, well, that's an opinion. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, wow. All right. He thinks I'm a fucking loser because I'm like, I don't think it's that, like, it. 
how it sounds is bad, but like it's it's a mix issue. Let's fix it. Yeah, the, the why the why yeah. matters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're you're the uh, yeah you're, you're the the Saint Anger truther. Yeah, the, uh, only, the only one. The, the Saint Anger truther. Oh wait, and and actually, guilty pleasure. It just it just struck me something that kind of fits in terms of like I'm not even sure I think this is good, but there's something about it that I enjoy. That the Transplants first record, it's just like there's something about I fucking love that the album, dude. I fucking love it's uh, the way I de- the way I've described that to people because I've seen it occasionally come up on Twitter, and it's like that album is just like it's Monster Energy by day, Four Loco by night. Like that's what that album is, and it's like, and it's like, Woo-hoo. it's it feels. Oh, dude, it rot. Yeah, tall cans in the air. Like, there's just like that is just debauched music. Like, I just, <laughs> it's just degenerate. That's like degenerate anthems right there. Like, like uh, dangerous degenerate anthems. And that's what I love. I, I like. I just love about uh, that album. I would love another Transplants record. Fuck. Oh, for sure, for sure. I would love that. That's that. That's a good one. That's I didn't. I would not have thought that. Like, that's not one that would have popped in my head right away. Probably because I'm like, oh, I fucking love the transplants. Like, I don't care what you think about me. No, that's that's funny. No, I appreciate that. That, that was a, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm about to fucking rock out the St. Anger tonight and be like, y'all don't know what you're talking about. This fucking snare. No, it's bad. The snare's bad. I'll just call it what yeah. it is. <laughs> um, well, Desmond, this was fucking awesome, man. I really appreciate your taking the time. Um, really excited about Career Day, where the band's heading. Excited about that journey for you. You're really passionate about it. I, uh, I encourage you to keep that passion and, and, and keep letting people know about this record and the things that that mean something to you and, and why it should mean like you know why it should mean something to them as well. Um, where can people find you? Where can they find more about the band? Do your Spotify plug for you know, all, sure. All that good stuff. So yes, please everybody stream where we've always been. Um, it's it's uh, out via Old Press Records, and it is uh, it's on it's streaming everywhere. We have physical stuff on the way. Hopefully, lots of physical stuff. Um, you can follow us at uh, at Career Day NY on all socials. That's Instagram and Twitter. I I use the band Twitter as my main Twitter. Um, you can follow me at. At when dogs dream on uh, on Instagram, uh, at I don't really use my my personal Twitter all that often. Uh, at Goldmember182, if you want to just have the the full set, and the uh, the podcast is uh, through the island podcast. Check check that out uh, if you wanted to hear what a hockey podcast that is influenced by Adult Swim and Andy Kaufman and Nathan Fielder. Uh, that's what it is. Um, but. Uh, yeah, just uh, you know, hit us up on the Career Day uh, NY socials. You'll probably get to have a conversation with me. Awesome. And then we are going to play a song off the new record that you are graciously giving me permission to do. Um, what song do you want to play? I, I think let's, let's do a new title. It's your fave. It's about my fiancé. It's uh, a, a friend of mine, when, when, we, when we dropped it as a single, like was like, that's a really Mark Hoppus melody, man. And I'm like, <laughs> hell yeah, dude. It's, it's my favorite like, that's, song on the record. That's my, that's my, I was, I've been a, 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 a Mark, a Mark Hoppus uh, truther since the, the 2005 breakup. So that, that was uh, great for me Mark to hear. Mark Hoppus truther. I'm going to go write a record called the Mark Hoppus truther. Hoppus that's, truther. A, yeah, that's a good one. Awesome. All right, dude. Well, hey, thank you. Well, let's do this again and again. But wish you best of luck sure. on this journey. Thank you, Pete. This is a new title by Career Day off their new album, Where We've Always Been. Uh, stay alive, dude. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.